as an institution, quality improvement's always been a priority. When we work as a team, we say, hey, how can each person be involved in this quality improvement process? And so it's not just, hey, it's just the physician or the clinician role, but it's how does an MA, how does the clerk, and how do the nurses, how does every different person play a role in improving the quality of our patient's care? It has actually opened my eyes on a lot of stuff. It's taking me back to seeing like within the organization, am I a team player and how can I do better at that? We brought our behavioral health team. They were on a different floor in our clinic. We brought them to the same level as our medical and dental. And that kind of just springboarded us in a direction where we were able to do a lot more for our patients. The biggest challenge that our clinic has faced with team-based care is the culture of, we've never done it this way, this is my role and this is what I do and I don't want to step into somebody else's department. Taking that away and teaching them that if we all get involved, even if I'm not a clinician, I can still provide you with some resources. You know, being the provider and saying, hey, I can still schedule that appointment for you. And a patient feels more comfortable because they know that they don't depend just on one person. It, it can be a whole team effort. And they know that they don't have to sit around and wait for the provider to be available to answer their question, but someone else in the team can provide that answer for them. In behavioral health at my organization, we really operated like a lot of private practices do, very siloed, very much managing our own schedules, and didn't really have a lot of interaction with the clinical team. And things were simpler, you know, like, okay, this is my role, this is what I'm doing. But I don't know if, they, if simpler was better, you know, because I think people were falling through the cracks or not getting exactly what they needed, or it was this really long process if, you know, say they came and talked to me, and they're like, oh, by the way, I haven't seen a dentist in five years. And then referring them was a process, you know, and I never really knew the outcome of that process. What we're starting to do is, you know, being able to send the dentist a memo that's like, hey, so-and-so, they requested dental care and they already have access to this patient's information since we're all on the same page, right? And then the dentist will reach out. We're able to do a lot more warm handoffs rather than those cold referrals. I see how it impacts our medical providers, our medical assistants, how it impacts our dentists and allows them an opportunity to have support in the room. When situations come up that feel overwhelming, it can be really isolating in those roles to feel like you don't have an answer or anyone to help with or any support. And so that's just our job is to be alongside and supportive. So I see it helping the team in the sense of resilience, like keeping people in the work. I can tell you that for the majority of our staff, being part of an effective team and a team that is working together towards the goals of improving patient outcomes is ultimately what helps retain them and makes them stay in the work they do. When I think of team-based care, what you're able to produce is often a lot better than what anyone could think of on their own. It's made us more thoughtful about how we use our team members to the best of their abilities um, and how each of them contribute to the overall care of our patients. The team-based care like not only has brought us into the medical dental clinics more, but it's brought the therapists across the state a little bit closer. So we're sharing like statewide referrals, say my caseload's full and I get a referral. I don't panic about like, oh my gosh, I can't help this person. It's like, I can send it to the team. You know, I, I have a team and that's really cool.